Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, all right, so now we are going to start on our four day adventure in Genesis 3, 22 through 24. Um, I felt like there was really too much here for me to, to try and do it all in one video um, and God kind of broke it down in four separate parts for me. So we're going to do for the next four days, we're going to spend in the same uh, two sorry, three verses, 22 through 22, 23 and 24. Um, so we we're going to read today from the contemporary English version. It says, the Lord said, they now know the difference between right and wrong, just as we do, but they must not be allowed to eat fruit from the tree that lets them live forever. So the Lord God sent them out of the garden of Eden where they would have to work the ground from which the man had been made. Then God put winged creatures at the entrance to the garden and a flaming flashing sword to guard the way to the life, life-giving tree. Okay, so when we look at these verses through the lens of love, God being all loving, all kind, all good, all the time, what these three verses encapsulate are the most heartbreaking moment in the history of the world. Um, these are the moments when God had to send out his children, his beloved children that he created. He had to send them into the world, no longer walking in his presence daily, no longer able to give them the very best of everything, where everything in the world was all good all the time for them. He could no longer give it to him. The thing that he desperately wanted to give them, he couldn't anymore. And the reason is, and, and I've covered this in other videos, but is that to be truly loving, he has to give us a choice to choose him. Because if he doesn't give us a choice, he's forcing himself on us. And that's not what he wants to do. He wants us to freely choose him. He wants us to have that choice. And when they ate from the fruit of the tree of life, of knowledge and good and evil, not of life, sorry, of knowledge of good and evil, they made the choice to no longer choose him, to no longer trust him, to no longer see him as all loving and all good and all kind. They chose to believe something different. And it absolutely broke God's heart. But because he loves his children, because he adores us, no matter how much we don't choose him, he always chooses us. But he knew, he knew that if he did not block the entrance to the garden with this winged creature that had the flaming swords, if he didn't block it and they could come back in and they could eat from the tree of life, it would mean that they'd live forever. And that's not loving either. Because once there's an awareness of the difference between good and evil, once there's awareness that they exist and they are now a reality and everything is not all good, it would not be kind to let us continue living in a world where there is evil. It wouldn't be kind. And I think if you, I don't want to be morbid, but... Um, I do, because I think that this is something that we need to think about. But if you think about the absolute worst thing you've ever heard of a human being doing to another human being, and imagine never, ever being able to get away from that, that would have been the fate that awaited us if we could never die, because evil propagates itself. And when we start operating out of fear, which is what, what evil perpetuates, it just gets worse and worse. And we have to actively choose good. And we have to actively choose the Lord to change that. But once evil was here, there's no escape other than God. And that's why he always had a rescue plan in mind. And we'll get to that more. But he had to allow for death. 
because otherwise it wouldn't be all loving. It wouldn't be all good. It wouldn't be all kind to allow his children to live in this world where eventually everyone was doing the worst thing that you could possibly imagine humans doing to each other. I think we've all seen enough evil and atrocity that's being taken place in this world right now to know that none of us want to live like that forever and ever and ever. We just have to remember that this was the most heartbreaking moment for the Lord. It was the moment that he was not chosen. And it wasn't about him not being chosen that broke his heart. It was about him not being able to allow them to live in perfection anymore, to allow them to live in abundance, to allow them to live in goodness and kindness and love all the time. Because that's what he wanted is just to lavish them in all of it, all the time, because he adored them. He adores us. And I know we don't always look at death as a gift. And I'm going to get to that more in the next video, but it really is when you consider what the alternative could have been. All right, y'all, that's it for today. Um, I am going to record these videos back to back. Uh, so you'll see me wearing the same thing tomorrow and the next day and the next day. Um, but I just wanted to get them all out while I am in this space. Um, I feel like the more that the Lord has taken me on this journey and shown me his love for me, and it, he's healed things in me and changed things in me, it's given me a greater understanding as a parent of how he feels about us. And I by no means am anywhere near um, like the Lord uh, and my ability to love and my capacity to love. But I do understand better how heartbreaking this moment was for him. And I don't think any of us should take that for granted. All right, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.